one. You could do kind of a Hendrix thing if you wanted. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my uh, index finger on the second fret uh, E string, B, uh, and B string barred. And I've got my middle finger on the third fret. Like that. Yeah, and then I'm taking the same idea where we have like... Where you, but I'm doing it, yeah, I'm doing it on the G string. So I'm going up to the four. So we have, and then I'm going back down to the third fret, and back up, and back down, and then to the, kind of like a little wing. Cool? Now we've, you can tell, you can tell this is like not of the jazz idiom, but more of the blues idiom, or blues rock idiom. Um, so if you combine that, that for the G flat, you'd have this. You've got the E minor to your F7. We had this note. And then um, to A. Cool. Now if you wanted to keep this kind of thing going now that we got this kind of weird bluesy double stop motif, you could do um, for the A. Exactly, exactly, you got it. All right, and then you've got a D major. Um, what could you do there? Um, another thing you could do is you could bend to that major seven if you want to be a little bit more uh, jazzy, maybe a little more outside. So you'd go from the sixth which would be the 4th fret, and you want to get up to the major 7. Cool, because keep in mind, this is our chord, major 7. Cool. You can even do all this like that if you want to be really fancy. Uh, I'll show you what I did there because I think it's kind of neat. Um, I'm doing the same thing you're doing at first, right? The the sixth, and then I'm putting my um, middle finger on the fifth fret of the B string, and put my index finger on the sixth. I'm doing them together, and then I use my ring finger to hammer on to the major seven, uh, to the major seven, which would be the sixth fret, and then back down to the index, and then my pinky on the seventh fret of the G D string, which is the, that note right there is the fifth, all right? And this is pretty fancy, because what we got here is we got our fifth, and then here we have the sixth of the chord, and the ninth of the chord on top. Cool, so the whole chord actually sounds like that now, although I'm not doing the whole chord. So now we had this. Um, uh, two beats. And then two. Um, and after that. And then to the D. It's really pretty. I mean, I'm tempted now. I'm tempted now to really just. If it were me, I'd go, wow, I got a cool idea here. And if I were taking a solo, uh, I'd want to maintain this idea and keep the integrity of um, of the sound as long as possible. So I, if I were going like, like, oh, okay, I'm playing something that... And I go, oh, oh, hey, that's cool. Oh, wow, I've got this, this, this thing going I like. Then I'd be like, well, can I keep this kind of thing going now? And that's as opposed to just being like, ooh, this sounds really cool. This is cool. To this. To this. Oh, you know, you got to think in the moment. Like. To my D minor. And then if I just started going like. Like, that would be such a divergence from what I had going. 
just like just like the way voice leading goes, where about you're trying to make like really rational sounding steps um, from one note to the next. You also kind of want to do that in a in a more broad sense. They wouldn't call it voice leading, but it it might be something like motif leading or phrase leading. You know, when we when we when we did this to this that that coming to this point didn't sound like a big divergence like a big leap like whoa how did he get there it kind of made sense uh and then i just followed that so we have our d minor you could do a lot of things like you could play like um i'll show you what that is because that's kind of a neat lick what i'm doing what i'm doing is i'm looking at the d minor as if it were a two chord all right, so if it were a two chord, what key would be in here? Yep, that's that's the first chord on the second staff. That right, we see, which means what would the three chord be? That's right, so what I'm doing is I'm going from E minor to D minor, even though it says it's a D minor chord. I'm doing both of those chords within that, like one beat each. Cool. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at a D minor pentatonic. I'm sorry, e, did I say E minor pentatonic? That's what I meant to say. Play an, e, play an E minor pentatonic. Oh no, do it at the uh, seventh fret. Good. And those notes they work. If this is if we're looking at the D minor as a two chord, they work over this chord. They're gonna sound a little more outside. Go ahead and play them. Hear how they work? What, what they are is the root of your E minor is actually the two of the D minor, which is like the the boss here. The D minor is the boss because that's the chord that we're playing, really. So we've got a two, and then we have the, uh, the four, and then we have the fifth of D minor and the sixth of D minor. And then we have the root of D minor, right? And then we just continue. We have the nine. So what I'm doing is I'm 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 playing mostly scale tones there. It creates a little tension, not a lot of tension because they are extensions. They're not alterations, which would be a lot of tension. So, yeah, exactly. And so what I've got here is I've got my um, I'm thinking of my E minor chord. Play your E minor chord like this. Okay. But now I'm not going to be playing all that. I'm going to bring my uh, index finger just to the D string. So I've got the D string, barred, and G. D and G barred with my index finger. And then I've got my middle finger on the 8th fret. Cool. And I'm going to hammer on with my ring finger to the 9th uh, the, uh, fret of the D string. And then I'm going to pull it back off. And put my pinky onto the uh, eleventh, so tenth fret. Cool. All right. So here's our here's like our D minor chord, and over that we hear. Keep that in your mind. That's our root here. Cool. Now this is only for one beat. Because then I go down a whole step and do the same thing from D minor. Just go down a whole step, two frets, and do the same thing from D minor. Yeah, exactly. And now this is going to work really naturally because it's a D minor chord, D minor 7 that we're playing that over. See how that worked? That's a bit more complex because we're looking at chords in relation to D minor. Make sense? So kind of your first step is playing around the chord that you're on. And the second step is looking at that chord within context of other chords. Um, so we had E minor in the beginning of the song to F. I mean, that's all we played. And then to B flat major 7. or And then to D flat 7. Here I was, by the way, the B flat I was looking at it like my fifth in root, barring on, uh, hammering onto the sixth. Down to the, to the, uh, hammering onto the major third of the D flat 7. And then doing the same thing where we uh, looking at a G flat major triad 
but I'm barring on to the fourth, or sorry, I'm barring the second fret, but I'm hammering on to the fourth, and then resolving, and then to the A, cool, and then going up to the D major seven. Yeah, I started with the lick you did with the sixth, where we go to the, the seventh fret on the D string and then seventh fret on the B string. And then I'm doing that kind of really kind of bluesy Hendrixy thing. Which is where I've got my middle finger on the fifth fret of the B string, my index finger on the fourth fret of the G string. And then I hammer onto the sixth fret of the G string, which is the major seven. Because it's a major seven chord, that works. And then I pull off back to the 6, and then I put my pinky on the 5th of the chord. And I let the others ring out while that's going on. Yeah. And then, taking this idea further, we have a whole measure there. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, you know? We've got plenty of time. Then we have, the next chord is D minor 7. <clears throat> which is where I took the 1, 2, uh, sorry, <clears throat> 1, 2, like that, and, I, and it, I won't be able to do it that, I'll have to do it really quick, like, like one, two, one, two, tricky. The reason is we have two beats in a measure here. Yeah, and then we have E flat seven. So here, maybe maybe I'll do something kind of kind of simple, uh, and and take our our what we did before, which would be the sixth fret of the B and E string, right? <laughs> 